The Stack, People, Business, Technology, with Dan Tomaszewski of Everything MSP. Hello, everybody. Dan Tomaszewski here with Everything MSP. Hope you're doing great today. I'm here with Brian Doyle with ECIO Toolbox. How are you doing today, Brian? Great, and thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's being here. Uh, we're, we're here at uh, Optia's Channel Con event in Atlanta, Georgia. It's been, uh, it's been a, a long week. Um, you know, lots of uh, networking, lots of education. Anything that's out you this week that you weren't from any MSBs? Uh, you know, Great part about these events is even if you think you're going to gear what you've heard from floor, there's always something new that comes into play, right? So, yeah. you know, there were some workshops around policy writing. We learned some things there. Serving we care switch her as the keynote speaker. Yeah. Had some good yeah. insights that you don't expect. And for in the speak community, you always get feedback that you might not expect as well. So, right. I think a big part of it is just keep, 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 keep talking to people and keep asking questions. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, one particular area is the area of uh, ECA, right? And, um, you know, I think the, how that role has evolved over the years. So much different than, you know, when I started my MSP or when you started your MSP, you know, it was more of the, you know, you know, more of the strategic pleading. You know, I mean, you know, you go from, uh, you know, step one of, you know, do an assessment, identify three key weaknesses. Step two is going to be that remediation, bringing things to standard. Yeah. Uh, step three is that ongoing TLC technology, love and care, yeah. you know, keeping things managed the way it should be. But that step four, you know, that strategic planning, and that's where what we called was my CTO. Um, but it was more of the strategic planning, and it means so much more today. It's so much... Um, you know, driven on that security side. Right? No doubt. And, you know, that position has off, right? Like, if you recall, when people started really pressing the ARS, a lot of times they were pulling in on the edge. And there were some right. deficiencies with that because sometimes those guys really couldn't talk the business side of the conversation right. to get really deep in the weeds. But it was had more of a role that was set to kind of bring some strats. And then along the way, Mostly because MSBs realized it was also a great way to speed up revenue. Sure. And it was a great way to, uh, you know, get engaged with the customer. Switch from one to an account manager. And this is no shade to any account managers out there. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, I was from the sales side of the hot test my lights as well. But the reality is when you, when you go to the account manager, it starts to get kind of short cut of internet or by sales. So some customers kind of saw through it. That's why he had come to the schedule. Say, and you run the every MSC runs. We call it purse the great MSC. Coffee, we get both. Yeah. Less run cycle, less things. Right. And as key stakeholders often are part of our day to day conversations, you know, I'm so all of a sudden they're hitting. Right. So, working pellet, you know, yeah. feed disc, you know, whatever. And now we got to restructure that QBR. We really have looked from the lens of the customer across the thing. What is she paramount? Yeah. What's important to them in their business? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we we talked a lot about, you know, the, the technical components. Uh, you know, while they're important to what happens day to day, you know, essentially what's important to right. our clients, business leaders, business owners, is their business, right? And we need to be having those business discussions, learning more about their business operations and how. You know, technology can help drive their business. Well, no doubt. I mean, you know, we believe very strongly. Yeah. Because for us to be a better partner, and you have to be not just what they want to do from the technology standpoint. What do they really want to do with their business? Who the kind of ships are going after? The option, right. Who's the base success? And you'll be surprised how much technology touches that. Yeah. Getting those factors. Yeah. Uh, what, you know, when, when we define BCAO, how would you define it? So I define them really as the customer and advocate, right? Okay. They're, they are supposed to be the trusted advisor. You know, the term I feel is overused, but let's go yeah. with it anyway, it's right? Still a valid term. So, totally. Yeah. Is the, that trusted advisor, fill in what's often the vacant leadership seat. And, you know, a lot of small and growing companies do not invest into the CIO or IT director until they fill the other right. Odin, CEO, CFO, and things like that in their business. We have a huge opportunity to fill that seat. 
go back. See if you can look back, act like we say, and really try to understand their thousands. So when you're blind, you really need somebody that understands the technology from a sees the field perspective, yeah. like a head yeah. coach. I'm not playing every position, but I know how they can all work together. Concert, right. and then we'll strive to understand customers trying to achieve being a good steward that along the way. Really yeah. making recommendations that make sense of these things. Oh um, how do you drive? Yeah. It, I mean, it's it's not something that uh, can just be done without any strategic planning, any, you know, uh, deep thoughts into what, what is good value. Um, but also, you know, we, we talked a bit about tools that you know, we've got PSAs, we got RMMs that we can pull all kinds of reports, but is that really valuable to the to the client? So I'm sure just like yourself, you know, we've done when I was an MSB, we did so many different nice B PDRs. Yeah. With the thud factor route where we grabbed all these reports and had all the pretty graphs and we put it on the TL. Yeah. And you know, candidly, customers liked it the first time because it told them where they were. Right. Second time they're like, all right, we're still doing without tech. Third time around, though, they were like, you know what's in for me? I've seen these numbers before. Right. This is where it's at. We've done PowerPoints. We've done Excel. You know, we've done all kinds of permeations. And it's tough for the customer to follow along for meeting and meeting to really see. Yeah. And I progress. He's the lead, lead push. They, I think they've used interest in those meetings. Sure. And those meetings are extremely valuable. Because you mentioned earlier, you know, uh, you know, why are we continue to pay you? Things seem to be working. Well, it's things that we're doing that are keeping things working. So... You know, it, you know, that, that should be happening day in, day out. Uh, but that's sort of planning, looking at digging deeper into their business, better identifying what things are important in their business, uh, is where we can invest that time. And they're going to want to be engaged. They're going to want to have those technology business. Yeah. And the thing that you've got to think about in that process is there's nothing like we're not sitting here saying performance. But yeah. make them matter. Have a story for the ones that you want to read recently. Right. Here's your page, guys. What I want to show you is because we've made some changes recently in the structure, you're seeing where ticket works. Yeah. The users have found that it pays productivity. And that's increasing your efficiency across your business. I'm sure there's no reason to attach to that. Right. So, you know, know what, you're, what you want to tell, take out in the KPI and then gloss awesome over the ones that are just kind of met. Sure. Yeah. That, you know, yes, because you want to back out in a post meeting, but yeah, not things that are pushing it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we don't have to kill a forest, you know. No, and definitely no kill a forest. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, not to pitch these you know, toolbox of this, but, you know, our whole play in the meeting presentations. Right. Oh, each one has its okay. own meeting and it's consistent per meeting. Okay. And, um, you know, all these other jealous slides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Preparing for, uh, you know, a presentation, a meeting, you know, and said technology business review, uh, in the past it was always very cumbersome, and you know, and so on. But if you have the right, you know, and you know, let's 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 share. Let's go the other way. Let's yeah. put the tool aside for a minute. Let's we'll just talk about process because I always like to say, ECIO toolbox is just a process for doing sure, you know, sure. early business reviews and now security management. Right, but. It's really just backing the process that you need to drive, and it's where the information goes. So, you know, my my ceiling is BCIO to be doing right by their customer. First of all, has to assemble when I call the office. Okay. They have to build a team around them. You have to have engineering support for when the key answer those questions and if app analysis yourself. Yep. You need security support because now a lot of customers are really concerned on cyber insurability and it's also a little bit about our SDC moments. Okay. But, you know, you need to have that resource there. You have to have executive buy this. You're doing this as a in contract UVR. There is a time investment. It's not revenue generating potential there, or the revenue generating portion's a little bit long down the street. And then the process itself is pretty simple. We love building a joint strategic plan annually, and then update on that. Oh, good. We conduct a gap analysis. Worst is the first. You've got to build a baseline. Yeah. But then it becomes a very repeatable, modifiable process. That along with product life cycle management will generate your roadmap. Okay. And we're really trying to build a few years out for no other reason than just folks planning. That's something that you often forget about also. And then finally, it's tie that stuff back to the strategic moves, just what you see for themselves. Hey, this is why it's going to should make this investment. Right. They're making them more confident, more important decision. You're not getting them on blind state. 
they're not forcing them to say and they're doing it in other areas of business um, you know i don't know like no i but technology seems to be one of those areas that um if we're not there um, on their own they're not looking at tech comes with big price true so that's a big yeah. part of it so even simple to in tech mess was just think about a laptop refresh for a 10 person customer yeah it's 10 12 brand you know with all software in and people running maybe even more right? Right, right that might be an expense that they don't pay any other singular event anywhere else that's right. you know when we look at fanny factors they, yeah it's because their investments are doing it to the run that's good you work well fishes and everything needs right, right? Yeah. so this is where you have to get in ahead of your customer really have to get into their yeah, it's being also out. What cards am I dealt with, and how am I in a hence position? Right. And you know, I mean, we we, we talk about our rotation. <laughs> I, I, I I pull up the money, right? Um, and it, you know, inevitably they're going to have to make those investments. But if we do it right, we can make it in you know in bite sized chunks, make it easier for them to accept, to stay current, to stay fresh. Um, you know, if you place a third of the workstations here, you know, you're, you know, they, it's something they can look forward to um, and break it down that way. Well, we really see kind of changing with the email and the customer understand that or to try to position it. So, you know, there's, everybody's here and, you know, there's a lot of buzz wrap and clients, but really in the MSB space, isn't that's happening? It's less the regulations because they've been here for a long time. It has been around. I have been around. These are not new, new regulations. But what has driven more? I should say I can see as well. To me. But what really has driven it? Cyber. You know, now you know. But now customers are finding it hard to get cyber insurance. Increasing premiums. Those that have the claims, how to review with and seem to actually have not answered. I answered this honestly. They just didn't put the right answer because they thought they had MFA because they could one swap but it wasn't. Everything. Sure. Yeah, as we saw, carve outs are coming out of that flames. So customers now are coming out of going, wait, this is a risk problem. This right. is not, and this could really be detrimental. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, that refresh, that like, hey, man, people in it, he sees for out a year, he comes a, hey, what's my price? And my employer alone with certain things, do you know, right. does this become an explanation? Right. Yeah. So we've got to educate them, and, you know, or servants, is the chassis was it? Yep, absolutely. You know, I mean, in other areas, you know, you mentioned risk. Uh, I've always been a pro keeper. We should nab a person in each company client who is a risk manic, you know, something that is going to be responsible because we as MSPs, we don't own all that risk. I mean, it's the client's environment where their system, the process, I think by assigning the risk manager at number one, it comes very clear this is this is not them. We're here to assist them. Keep so on. Yeah, no, you can't say it better than that. I mean, there should be somebody that is the officer with the company that handles risk. I go so far as that, and it has to be spot on. It's not. Okay. And the main reason for that, too, you know, risk beats check and balance. Right? Sorry. With the art for an underwrite department or an investor, okay, and say, hey, guys, right, you always aren't the ones right on the all risk management side of the business. Yeah. Somebody else do that within no, the realm of the as well. Wow. Right. So, you know, a lot of times that falls to the CFO. They naturally inherit risk, even in a smaller company. Yeah. They're managing the house, they're managing money, flow, they're managing. And now, what we got to understand is where does like risk coming into line with those folks as well? And I mean, that comes down also to, you know, like cyber, you know, security training. Uh, like, yes, because, you know, the, the ability, you know, as new weight comes out, um, that ability that's there, then jumping onto a laptop is tremendous. It's huge. I mean, you know, we all talk about acceptable use policies and things that might be customers' hand have a bad deal. Is, right, yeah, those things are not as balanced as those. Right, no, it goes beyond social media. Social media, there's dark yeah. considerations. Don't get taken. Have to, yeah, circumvent our builders at times. I'm not sure that's our rules. Check themselves. Right, so they don't find themselves where they might be in a position. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on, um, 
you know, MSPs, you know, they're coming to conferences like this, but if they're, you know, specializing in, in certain bureaucrats, you know, whether you know, financial planners, uh, uh, accountants, and so on, them getting more involved in looking to industry events, you know, in maybe the CPA field, so on. I think, you know, the MSP community loves to do these events. I totally am on board with yeah. the fact that we got to educate ourselves all the around our groups. But you do have to get into articles you serve and know. So, technology expert. Or, right. I might not be sending South Carolina business application, but I've got to understand how it operates, where its gaps might be, yeah. how it's going to intersect things we And what those vendors are saying to your clients. Because, you know, uh, yeah, this is a... I can't work your type scenario, but I remember uh, what they were like coming back from an event. This is many years ago. I'm saying, you know, hey, Dan, we need to move the cloud. And I'm like, you know, he's, I'm like, well, where, where's this coming from? He's like, I was just sending a vet, and we, everybody's moving to the cloud. We need to move the cloud. And I'm like, well, you do realize that we have a lot of things like that, you know, like your exchange, your email. He's like, oh, it can't be. This is brand new, right? You know, so they're hearing things at these events. And they, you know, might really skew their thought of like, well, geez, you, I don't think you guys are up to speed with what's going on out there. I mean, right. Yeah, I right. Yeah. There's a million ways that we can all use AI. Yeah. The it's not a million people using it every day. Yeah. And it's a jetter. Right. So it's, it's learning what this really means to the customer, how they're going to leverage it. You know, I used to say, Conversation that we were assessing. Planet is this still a because they need your guidance. Oh, okay. Can you look at the stuff we can't? See? Yeah. And certainly, I'm not going to stop them from a hey, what's your workflow perspective when I'm supporting them there? They like the software. Then I'm going to ask the questions of where's it hosted, the sign life cycles, you know, and go into that process. You know, what's your key process? Those kind of questions that customer will think to make sure that it's a legal operator. How mature are you? Which support staff will like right. questions that we hear as vendors yeah. every day. Yeah. And, and go ask those. Yeah. And, I mean, even if you don't go to the Dost industry events, get on those industry's uh, newsletters, right? Those association newsletters. Uh, yeah. You know, stay in tune with it. You know, maybe that this is why, you know, you get uh, notifications of the, you know, like updates coming out. So, so you can know what's down the pipeline. There's no doubt. You know, I've seen it. Probably the biggest place I've seen people get very well close to the line. Close. Because I'm going to have a support position. And there's really just going to And those that really understand also find themselves. Sure. It's now they got to know which is the, where's the problem originating on the left right. and the right. Yeah. Any, uh, as we wrap up, any parting words that you'd like to... To oh, say, you know, my parting words are always this, and we'll talk to your last. The way you stay, the way you retain, talk to your customers. Be their advocate, work to where the, you see the gaps are. Yeah, it's yeah. Get it's strategic. Yeah. Learn what they're trying to do, and then speak to them about the project you're doing. I always say, everything goes on, I'm stealing it out. So right. in particular, it's your and they see it. You're going to reduce all this stuff. Yeah. So now it's just it's the project we have a cool. It's the conclusion we want. Very good. Brian Doyle with BCAO Toolbox. Brian, is always, it was a pleasure. Great to see you. Thank you for, for all the uh, knowledge and sharing with us. No, I appreciate you having me on. It's great to come out here and, and take these things. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody out there, thank you for uh, listening to us today. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening to The Stack.